Throughout my time in middle school, I went on a lot of different field trips. My school kind of believed in the idea that field trips hold a lot of educational value, and that's something I would definitely agree with. We went to a lot of different places, but no matter what, at least once every year our class would go to the zoo. I was in 7th grade, it was near the end of the school year, and this is the day our school was scheduled to take that trip. Now, we didn't live near a big city, so we weren't able to go to some big city zoo. Rather, we went to this smaller, but still decently sized zoo surrounded by forests. It was actually really well known where we lived, so despite its location, it saw a decent amount of business. Nowadays, however, I think the place went out of business, but I could be wrong. Our class had about 40 people. We would all travel in one group and take a predetermined route. But what sucked is, because we had such a big group, we didn't move quick enough to be able to see the whole zoo. To get around this, my friend Carson and I would sneak away from the group and create our own route just for the two of us. Heads were counted at the start of the trip, at lunch, and at the end of the trip. So as long as we made sure to be with the group at those times, we knew no one would notice. Not even 10 minutes after our group set off, and we split away. We explored different parts of the zoo all the way up until lunch. When lunch came, we inserted ourselves back into the group like nothing even happened. It went so smooth in fact that we had planned to do the exact same thing after lunch. Even with our pace, there were a few enclosures we didn't get to see yet. One I really wanted to see was the bat enclosure. It was actually probably the enclosure the zoo was most known for. They had this whole cave entrance set up, man-made of course, and inside were the bats themselves. But it was cool because they had to like reverse simulate night and day with the lights, so that way the bats would be awake when the zoo had visitors. This meant that during the day, besides a few dim black lights to let visitors see, it was completely dark. So, once lunch ended, we once again split from the group and this time headed to the bat enclosure. Like how I just described, it was dark. I could tell there were a few other people in there, but not too many. I was physically pointing something out to Carson, when I felt someone grab my arm with a good amount of force. I looked over, and it was some guy in one of the zoo employee uniforms. He told me we weren't allowed to touch the glass, something I wasn't actually even doing, and said the two of us would have to follow him. We were of course a bit startled. We did not want to get in trouble with the zoo, because we knew that meant we would in turn get in trouble with our school. So we followed him. He led us through a few dark passageways, until finally I could see the neon glow from an exit sign. He was taking us outside. He then opened the door, and all the light from outside seeped in. We continued to follow him. We went outside and the door closed behind us. That's when we realized that all that was out there was the forest and an old car parked against the building with nothing but its trunk open. We had no idea what we were doing out here. The guy then turned around and told us to get in. There was no need for him to specify. There was nothing else for us to get into other than the trunk of this vehicle. That's when we were starting to realize something was definitely wrong. We frantically turned around and tried the door but it had locked itself when it closed. When we turned back around, we noticed the guy now had a knife and was pointing it in our direction. He started shifting it towards the trunk in such a way like he was telling us to hurry. Carson and I looked at each other, then back at the guy. I yelled out one word, run, and we did. We were able to just barely get past the guy. We then ran directly into the forest where we knew he'd have a tough time chasing us. I don't know how long we ran, but it was long enough to lose the guy. I knew that if we turned right, we would eventually hit a fence to the zoo. So we did, and sure enough, we hit a fence. The two of us jumped it unnoticed, and we're now both back in the zoo. A few minutes later, we found our class and regrouped with them, completely out of breath. Once again, we went unnoticed. Carson and I agreed to keep quiet about the whole thing. It sounds selfish, but at the time, we knew if the school found out about what we went through, they would massively cut down on the amount of field trips offered. So, we went the rest of the day like nothing even happened. A few days later, I would get a text from Carson. It was a group photo our whole class had taken near the entrance of the zoo just before leaving. There was a text under it. It read, Look in the top left corner. I frantically reopened the image. There, standing in the background near the top left corner, was the guy that had tried to kidnap us. Like, it wasn't even a question, that was clearly the same guy. His face wasn't even blurry, and he was looking directly at the camera as the picture was taken. This picture absolutely horrified us. I didn't think the guy was a real employee. I kinda just assumed he had somehow stolen the uniform. 
but seeing this picture made me think otherwise. At the end of the day, real employee or not, I just hope this guy never got a chance to try and kidnap any other unsuspecting kids. I used to live near a couple pretty well-known state parks as a kid. This was back when I was in elementary school, and the elementary school I went to would actually use the parks as field trip material. They would take us out there and teach us about plants, wildlife, you know, just nature-centered stuff like that. If I remember correctly, I was in first or second grade when this happened. The school had another one of these state park field trips planned. My whole class rode up on a bus. There were probably about 50 or 60 of us, so definitely not the easiest to keep track of. Regardless, however, the trip was going well. Eventually, it got to around lunchtime. Now, the state park had this playground, just like one you'd see in a regular elementary school. When we finished our lunch, we were allowed to go and play on it. Being a kid, I of course ate as fast as I could and went to go play. I remember I was by myself on a swing set that was sort of in a back corner of the playground. Really, I was waiting, because I guess I had finished so quick that there weren't really any other kids to play with yet. I was looking out at the trees, when I noticed an older guy, I would guess early 50s, partly hiding behind a tree looking at me. When he noticed I saw him, he stepped out from behind the tree completely, jokingly saying something about how I had caught him. He started walking closer towards me, and that's when I realized he had a camera in his hand. He started taking pictures of me. And when I asked what he was doing, he explained how he worked for a magazine company and needed new pictures for the front cover. Seven or eight year old me totally bought it. I mean, I genuinely remember thinking how cool it would be to see myself on the front cover of a magazine. The guy then began asking personal questions, like what my address was, what my parents did for work, what their phone numbers were, and what my social security number was. I couldn't really answer most of his questions, cause I mean, again, I was just a kid. I didn't even know what his social security number was. But nonetheless, I answered his questions to the best of my ability. The guy then said he needed to go to his car because he forgot to grab something. He asked me if I could go with him. I trusted the guy, so I said yes. He grabbed my hand and began leading me in the opposite direction of where the other kids were still eating lunch. He was leading me directly into the forest. I looked behind me and could no longer see the playground, rather just trees all around. I asked him where his car was, and he replied saying it was just up ahead. After a couple more minutes, a parking lot came into view. He continued to lead me to a car in the very back. He opened up the back seat and told me to get in. I looked up at the guy, now confused. I told him that I thought we were just coming back to get something. The guy then sternly repeated himself, this time in a yell. I was completely caught off guard by his sudden change in demeanor. I was now scared, and so I listened to him and got in the back seat. He slammed the door in my face and began running around the car to the driver's side door. He got in and started driving. In a shaky voice, I asked him where we were going. We locked eyes for a second in the rearview mirror, but he didn't answer me. He just had this disturbing, extremely focused look on his face. I tried the car door handle, but the child's safety lock was on. I noticed we were nearing the exit of the park, and I remember tears beginning to well up in my eyes. This was the most distraught I had ever been in my life, but that's when I noticed one of those park ranger pickups pull up behind us. I began frantically flailing my arms through the back window. I really was just doing anything to get the park ranger's attention. The man driving me noticed what I was doing and began shouting at me to get down and lay on the floor. He pulled a gun out from under his seat and started pointing it back at me. Naturally, I did exactly what he said, but the damage had already been done. The park rangers behind us put on their lights and signaled us to pull over. The man did so, but told me to stay where I was and not say a word. Though, this effort would be futile. The park rangers had noticed me. The man was handcuffed first and asked questions second. One of the officers then found me and comforted me. When I told them what happened, backup was immediately called to the scene. The man would of course be arrested. I didn't ride home on the bus that day. Instead, my mom would drive over and pick me up. She was as equally angry with me as she was thankful that I made it out okay. She both embraced me and scolded me. It's rare for a day to go by where I don't think about this experience. I was saved from a kidnapping simply because of a right place, right time scenario. Those park rangers don't show up when they did, and I'm as good as gone.
took a lot of different art classes in college, and many of them would have a few different field trips scheduled. Usually it was just to an art museum, but some of them were a bit more involved. There was one in particular, I believe it was for this art appreciation class I took. Basically, it was an over the weekend thing in a small town a few hours away, that I guess you could say was kind of known for its art. We were meant to go around the town learning about a few different predetermined pieces and take pictures to prove we went. So, it wasn't really a group thing, just kind of a go and on your own time learn about a few different pieces of art. The whole thing was only for extra credit in the class, but it was a pretty substantial amount. I asked one of my friends in the class, who I'll just call Alex if she wanted to go with me. She agreed, so we reserved a room at some hotel, and that Friday night we started heading over there. The plan was to get there on Friday night, spend all Saturday looking at art, and leave on Sunday morning. When we arrived, we realized just how sketchy the area was. And I'll just be straight up, the motel looked terrible. It was clearly very old, but by that point, it was pretty much too late to look for someplace else to stay. We sucked it up and went to our room. The inside wasn't any better. I don't really know how to describe it, the whole place was just all around sketchy. But, I mean, it would only be two nights we'd have to deal with this. We figured we should probably get up early for tomorrow. So we decided to just go to bed, and that's exactly what we did. Fast forward, I honestly don't really know how long, and I woke up to the room phone ringing. I was confused, it was still dark outside. I picked up the phone and quietly said hello so as to not wake up Alex. There was no response, but oddly, there was slow breathing. Clearly, someone was on the other line. I said hello a few more times this time a little louder, though still, no response, just breathing. Then, something I wasn't expecting. There was suddenly a knock coming from our room's door, but I could hear it through the phone as well. Whoever I was on the phone with was outside our room. That's when the line went dead and I was once again in complete silence. I sat there in shock for a few seconds. I didn't know what to think of what had just happened. I decided to wake up Alex, who by this point was still asleep. I told her everything, and she confirmed it was definitely weird. We pulled back the blinds a bit, but there was no one out there. Ultimately, we decided that whoever this was had no way of getting in the room, so we both agreed to just go back to sleep and talk to the front desk about it tomorrow morning. Eventually, I did fall back asleep. I know this because at some point I woke back up again. It was still completely dark outside. I was a bit weirded out. Usually, I wake up to some noise, or I wake up because I have to use the bathroom. But this time, nothing. While I was trying to fall back asleep, I noticed this dark figure in the corner of the room. Now, this might sound weird, but my eyes commonly make things up in complete darkness. Like, if I'm in a dark room, I'll usually see things that aren't actually there. Typically, it's things like a coat rack that my eyes see as a person. Just small things like that. I thought that's exactly what was happening now, so I didn't give the figure much attention. But every time I would close my eyes to try and fall asleep, when I would open them, it looked like the figure was closer. It got to the point where it looked like someone was leaning over my bed. But I still thought I was just imagining it. I lifted my arm and was planning on passing it through the figure as a way to prove to my mind that it wasn't real. But as I did so, my arm hit something. It was a real person leaning over my bed. I screamed, and in a matter of seconds, the figure turned around, opened the door to the room, and was gone. Alex woke up and saw it happen. The both of us were scared out of our minds and completely out of breath. We shut the door, locked it, and this time barricaded it. We had no idea how this person was able to get into our room. We sat there wide awake until the sun came up. When it did, we immediately left, cutting our trip short. We didn't even talk to the front desk, but on our way back, we did call the police. We would later learn that apparently, when the shift of the person working the front desk had ended, they didn't confirm the next person with the shift had or was even planning on showing up. This left the front desk completely unattended, and that's when some unidentified person walked in and stole multiple customers' personal information, which included their room numbers. And, of course, they also managed to get a master set of room keys, allowing them to enter any room. What practices the motel had that allowed something like this to happen is beyond me. 
and it's not even like the person has a chance of being identified. The motel is old enough to where there's not even a single camera installed, and no one saw the person's face. All I know is some person who's willing to break into our hotel room has all of our personal information, and this thought still disturbs me.